And boxing teams to go up and down. And but this weekend, tomorrow per se, out in out in the UK in London, the heavyweight championship of the world is up for is up for grabs. Anthony Joshua against Kubrat Pulev. And then in two weeks, Canelo Alvarez returns to the ring. So I want to talk to the guy who knows boxing inside and out. Good friend of ours. He writes for Ring Magazine. He's got his own podcast as well. It's the Neutral Corner podcast. It's every Monday. You can follow him on Twitter at Montero on Boxing. It's Michael Montero. What's going on, my friend? How are you? I'm doing well. How you doing, Jim? I'm doing fantastic, man. Hope you are well, considering all that is going on in the world. So, and always thoughts and prayers, you know, we just do what we can to get through it all. So, the return of boxing, kind of. You know, there, there's actually going to be people in the stands in London. There's going to be about 1,000 people in the arena for Anthony Joshua and Kubrat Pulev. Why are we not more excited for the heavyweight championship of the world? Well, Jim, I guess because, well, there's a couple things. I mean, first of all, Anthony Joshua hasn't been in the ring at all this year. And, you know, as you mentioned, all the things going on in the world, of course, with COVID, that really hit boxing hard, man, because, you uh, these fighters, you know, they haven't been in the ring. A lot of these guys uh, are just making their first, uh, their 2020 debut. That, like uh, Joshua Canelo Alvarez next week is going to be fighting for the first time in 2020. But then also, you know, fans aren't in the stands either. There's only a thousand fans in the stands. Uh, this this fight in London between Joshua and Pulev. So that's part of it. But I think the biggest thing is because we're not getting the fight that everybody wants, and that's between Anthony Joshua and Tyson Fury. That is the fight. That would determine the true, legitimate, undisputed heavyweight champion. And until that fight happens, I don't think you're going to get that universal uh, excitement from casual sports fans. I I couldn't agree with you more, Michael. I mean, you could have that fight on Mars. You could have that anywhere. People will be interested. And, 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 And I don't necessarily buy the whole, well, in this country... For example, there's not an American heavyweight champion because there was an American heavyweight champion. Andy Ruiz, he beat Anthony Joshua, and yet it didn't create – it created a little bit of a buzz. I mean, we saw Andy Ruiz on Jimmy Kimmel for, for, for a hot second, but then he quickly lost the title, you know, immediately back to Anthony Joshua out in Saudi Arabia. Is boxing ever going to be more than a niche sport? Because it doesn't seem like whatever – whenever it starts to take, it all of a sudden takes – it shoots itself in the foot. Yeah, you know, Jim. I mean, this that question might be the question I get asked the most. Sure. By by sports fans, um, I gotta say, you know, I I call boxing kind of like underground mainstream, and what I mean by that is it is an underground niche sport, and I do think it always will be. But at the same time, it's mainstream in the sense that it is part of our culture. I mean, right now, anywhere in America, pick a city. There's CEOs in boardrooms using phrases like you know uh, we're up against the ropes this quarter but we gotta you know roll with the punches you know i mean it's part of our culture it, it always will be but because of the way boxing is managed and because of na- now it's more globalized than ever it's so massive you can't have one central governing authority it'd be impossible there's all these different sanctioning organizations um, and a lot of fighters in other parts of the world no longer have to come to america to be big brands and make big money. I mean, guys over in the UK, like Anthony Joshua, for example, he could stay over there if he wants to. Right. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so, so, and there's other countries like that, other markets like that. So I think it's always going to be a niche sport, but, but when boxing does get it right, when you really do put two of the best guys in their prime, in the, the two of the best in the division, in the ring with each other, it breaks through. And we've seen this. We've seen this several times in recent years. Earlier this year, when Tyson Fury fought Deontay Wilder, those were two of the top three heavyweights in the world. That was a highly anticipated rematch. And that pay-per-view almost did a million pay-per-view buys, which during the, the days of streaming, that's pretty impressive. Yeah. But also, it broke through on social media. It broke through into the mainstream sports media. So when boxing gets it right, it breaks through. But week to week, it is a niche sport. And you know what? I'm cool with that, Jim. Yeah, you know what? It's, it's sort of like, hey, man, it's it's our little thing, and maybe you don't want all the riffraff, to, to, for, for, for lack of a better word, to come in and, and sort of pollute your sport. But at the same time, there seems to be, and I, I, you know, I, I was a DAZN for a little bit, and the highest rated or viewed streamed fight we had featured 
two YouTubers. Logan, right. Logan Paul against KSI. Now, I know boxing guys shudder when they think that two YouTubers, but again, that's how you break through. And then we see the undercard of the Tyson Roy Jones uh, card had a YouTuber and Jake Paul who knocked out Nate Robinson. And now Floyd Mayweather wants to fight a YouTuber, he wants to fight Logan Paul. So there is something there. Is that something that, as a boxing, a guy who covers the sport, who lives the sport, do you like that, or do you, sh- or do you sort of sh- shake your head at it or hold your nose? Yeah, you know, that, that first event that you mentioned between uh, Logan Paul and KSI, it, it's for the record, I had no freaking idea who these people were. <laughs> so, <laughs> My kids did. My kids had to tell me who they were. My kids did. Yeah, I, I had no idea. But when that first event was announced, I will admit as a boxing purist, a purist I was like, what the hell is this? And I didn't love it. However, I've since come around to understand why, why it keeps happening. It's going to continue to happen. It breaks through. And the bottom line is, you know, boxing and sports and entertainment in general is moving off of cable, off of traditional television and into the streaming world. It's going into apps, things like YouTube and things like Triller, which until the Tyson Jones card, I had no idea what the hell Triller was. I thought they were, um, mis- I thought they were misspeaking the Michael Jackson videos. Like, why do they keep calling yeah, it Triller? <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, that's pretty much what all of us, anyone over 30, that's what we thought, right? <laughs> uh, but that, that's where media is going, man. That's where entertainment's going and sports, obviously. Boxing, obviously, is part of all that. So the Paul brothers, KSI, all these guys, they have tens of millions of followers. And if you have that, that's clout in, in that world. So if you're going to put on events in that space, you need to have people to market th- those events in that space. And, and that's what the Paul brothers do. I get it. I will say this about the Paul brothers, particularly Jake Paul. I, I know guys who have been in the gym and trained with him, real guys, pros, and he actually, actually does take it seriously. So I'll give him that respect. This isn't the same thing as, remember, I think it was Fox. and you, Going back maybe 20 years, they did that celebrity boxing. Right, right. With like Screech and Horshack. Right. And Jose that. Canseco and, yeah. Right, right. It, it, these were people that were literally going to L.A. Fitness and hitting a heavy bag for a few weeks, <laughs> and they called themselves boxers, Right. This is different. I, I will give KSI and the Paul Brothers credit. They actually are training like real pros and taking it seriously, showing up in shape. So I'll give them credit. The only thing that maybe irks me a little bit is when you put them on in the main event and a pro boxer has been doing it their whole life is stuck way down on the undercard. I mean, that's that's kind of tough to swallow. Right. But this this is a capitalist enterprise. That's what boxing is, you know? Well, well, and speaking of capitalists, you got the money man from the money team, Floyd Mayweather, fighting Logan Paul in February. And I think when you see that Mike Tyson against Roy Jones Jr. May, gets 1.6 million pay-per-view buys, and to put that into perspective, Canelo Alvarez has drawn 1 million pay-per-view buys once, and that's when he fought Floyd. So the fact that two 50-year-old guys... I think also the fact that the pay per view was only fifty bucks and not eighty, but all of a sudden, are we going to start seeing that again? Are, are we really now getting into more like a circusy type thing now? Well, well, for the record, I, I do think uh, Canelo Alvarez has drawn more than a million several times. I know the two fights with Triple G did, his fight with Chavez did, so he has. He and I think uh, his fight with Cotto is just under a million, mm-hmm. so he has he has sold more than a million several times. Um, However, he's been on the zone for over a year now, so he hasn't been on pay-per-view. We don't know how he'd do right now in this environment. But as you mentioned, with, with the Tyson versus Jones thing, um, I, I do think the reduced price helped. I think the star power of that entire event and the circus nature of it made it was part of the selling feature. I mean, it wasn't just Tyson and Jones, but uh, Snoop Dogg was doing commentary. <laughs> it was all over the place. A star is born, crazy. right? But, yeah, yeah, man. So I think a lot of people just looked at it like, hey, man, let's have some fun. 50 bucks, you know, that, that's pretty much the price of three beers in Los Angeles. So right. let's, just, let's buy this card and have some fun. And do you, I think that – I'm sorry, I was just going to say, if Tyson fought once a month, do I think they could sell pay-per-views like this? No, it would, he hadn't fought in 15 years. It was an anomaly. 
Uh, I do think we'll see more of it, but I don't think this is something we're going to see all the time. And I don't think not every card is going to sell one and a half million pay-per-views. It's just impossible in this environment. But boxing's always been a circus, Jim. I mean, these sorts of events have, have always existed in boxing. This is really nothing new. Yeah, Don King is, and Don King for a long time was the actually the, the ringmaster of it all. It's Michael Montero. You can hit him up on Twitter at Montero Unboxing. His podcast is the Neutral Corner Podcast. It's every Monday. Hit him up. Great source. We're going to have to have you on again, Michael, because I can't talk to you enough, my friend. Absolutely, man. That sounds great. Have a great weekend, Jim. All right, buddy. Stay safe and stay well.